It's Monday the 23rd of October 2017 and you're watching the Low Budget News. We've got some breaking news in fact. Everton manager Ronald Koeman has been sacked after 497 days in charge. In that time he managed 58 competitive games winning 24 giving him a win percentage of 41.38%. But after a disappointing start to the season with the club finding themselves 18th in the Premier League, bottom of the Europa League group and out of the Carabao Cup, it seems the board think it's time for a change. Pundits are already speculating on who the new manager could be with Carlo Ancelotti, Claudio Ranieri and even former boss David Moyes in discussion. Actually, I'm... Um, I'm just hearing that the club have released a statement regarding the new manager. Bloody hell, that's quick. Everton chairman Bill Kenwright has said, we'd planned for this eventuality and have already hired a replacement for Ronald. Our new manager will have the same amount of time as Ronald had to make this club great again. 497 days. However, as we are fair, we have decided to use our time machine to give the new manager the pre-season to prepare. So this statement is pretty pointless since this timeline will never happen. What? Paul, what is you? It's a joke, isn't it? It's gotta be a joke. It's a joke. first series on Football Manager 2018. We're taking charge of Everton and we're taking charge in replacement of Ronald Koeman. Now a bit of background on the series. So Ronald Koeman lasted 497 days in charge of Everton. So that's how long we are going to be in charge of them. Our final day will be November the 5th, 2018. I do realise that's the middle of the season, but to accurately compare myself and Ronald, that is when I would have to end my contract. Also, transfer window transfer budget sorry will be disabled in the first transfer window so i'll be working with the players that ronald Koeman actually worked with for the first part well for all of this season that he was in charge of so in order for us to accurately compare ourselves to ronald Koeman, i have had to develop a points system kind of thing um so we'll just run through it here you can see that we've got points allocated for each finishing position in the Premier League. In the second season, it'll be the position that we're in as of November the 5th. So you get 10 points to finish at first, nine for second, you can see down there, it goes down all the way to minus 10, um, which I hope we don't get in the minuses because that'll be a big disappointment. And we'll have probably been sacked before then anyway. In the cup, we get one point per win in the cup competition, and then we get a 10 point bonus for winning a cup competition so that's obviously in the first season the Carabao Cup the FA Cup and the Europa League so the final thing to do before we actually get into the game is to have a look at Ronald Koeman's record as Everton manager and work out his points total so starting with the Premier League he finished seventh in his first season and that would give him four points but then he was 18th when he got the sack this season which gives him minus eight so that's a total of minus four for the Premier League in the EFL Cup, he won one game per season, so that's two points. FA Cup, he didn't win a game. Zero points there. Europa League, he won three qualifying games, but didn't pick up any wins in the group stage. So that's three points there, giving him a total of one point for his time in charge of evidence. So as long as we can beat that, we will have done better than Ronald. So let's take a look at the competition expectations for the season, first of all. And if we look at the Premier Division, we are expected to finish in the top half of the table, which obviously goes against where Everton were in the table when Ronald Koeman was sacked in 18th. So I think the top half should be achievable, obviously finished 7th last season. In the Europa League, we're expected to reach the quarter final. We start in the third qualifying round. That'll be the first match that we play on uh, Livecom as Everton manager. 
in the FA Cup than we expected to reach the fifth round. Obviously, yeah, we're in the third round stage, fifth round should be achievable for us. And then the Carabao Cup is not important. Standard. Now let's take a look at our tactics that I've chosen for the season. Uh, I've picked three, three slightly different ones. This is our starting tactic, the 4 one 2 3 um, this is also our starting eleven for the beginning of the season. Uh, players are out injured, such as Ross Barkley and Seamus Coleman. So we have Jordan Pickford in goal, Mason Holgate, Michael Keane, Ashley Williams and Leighton Baines in defence. Idris Ekana Guy is in defensive midfield. Morgan Schneiderlin is playing as the Carolero in support and Sigurdsson as the Mitsala in support to new rules to the game this season um, we'll just take a closer look at what each rule does so the Carolero or Shuttler is a supporting rule more often than not utilised as a part of a midfield three or as two centre midfielders in a dynamic midfield it's the job of the Shuttlers to cover lateral areas of the pitch and link defensive midfield with attacking midfield so it's that's kind of what separates them from the box to box midfielder because they're not expecting to show up between boxes just between the lines of the midfield. So we've got Morgan Schneiderlin playing in there to start with. And then the Metzala is a central player that likes to drift wide and operate in the half spaces. So basically a central half winger does defend slightly up the field, although he does have less defensive responsibility. And of course, Sigurdsson will be playing that role to start with two. Wingers in Kevin Morales and Adamola Luckman and then Sandro as the lone striker up top. I do have a few saved lineups to choose from because I know rotation is a big issue in Football Manager this year. I have seen lots of people that have been getting injuries, um, quite a lot of injuries early on in their seasons. So to avoid that, I've got a squad for each competition. I'm not going to be afraid to, to rotate if required. Our second tactic Our second tactic is one that actually worked in real life for Everton in January. I believe it turned their form around in this season, well in last season. So I decided to go with that one. Pickford again in goal. We've got three centre backs, two stoppers and one cover in Michael Keane. Two wing backs in Baines and Holgate, and we have the Carolero of Garner, Mitzala and Sigurdsson, and the ball running midfielder in Schneiderlin, with two up top this time being Rooney as a complete forward and Sandro as a poacher on attack. And the final formation that I've chosen to teach the team is a basic 4 4 2. It's just Mike Bassett style 4 4 2. Um, basically, because I think if managers the AI managers work out how I'm playing with the other formations they'll not be expecting me to play a 4-4-2. Uh, with this one the main change is Sigurdsson will be playing out wide on the left and Uman Yas will be the supporting striker for Sandro up top. But like I said this will be our starting formation. If it doesn't go well we'll change things because no AI managers are cleverer this year's game and it's no longer a case where you can just plug and play a tactic and it's going to help you win things so I know we need to change things around we'll probably end up changing the formations that I've already created as well um, the team instructions for this one are play wider and low crosses simply because I know we don't have much jumping ability in the squad we don't really have much height either so balls getting whipped in from Luckman and Morales to Sandro are going to be more along the floor or knee level so you can just smash them in on the volley that's the plan anyway now we're looking at the brand new feature in the football manager 2018 dynamics so a match cohesion is currently poor they're not the players haven't yet developed a good level of understanding which is to be expected really it is not even pre-season yet it's before pre-season the first day of the season is in a few days i think it's thursday of this week so that's obviously going to be something to work on Dressing room atmosphere is good. We don't have any unhappy players at the moment. I'm sure that will change once we get into the season properly. And then managerial support is average as I've just started the job. Now looking at the hierarchy and we have three 
team leaders at this club, Leighton Baines, Phil Jagielka, and then surprisingly Wayne Rooney, who obviously signed from Manchester United back to Everton. So it could be his standing in the game that makes him a team leader, or it could be the fact that he is was originally an Everton player. A few highly influential players as well, including Morales, Barkley, Coleman, McCarthy, quite a few of those, and then a few less influential players and quite a lot of other players as well. So provided they keep the team leaders happy, then I should keep morale up. So I'm just going to keep those two happy. I think Rooney's going to be the hardest to please because he's only in my starting eleven. If we play the four four, no, if we play the three five two formation, he'll be hoping that my other tactics don't work really. Now looking at the social groups, and thankfully we have quite a lot of players that are in a social group. There's only four that aren't. That's Adam Ola, Luckman, Kuka Martina, Sandro. And Jordan Pickford so hopefully they can bed in um, a like something I do like is the feedback on the right hand side how it recommends players that have been scouted that might fit in with existing social groups so it's suggested Isaac Success, Matt Ritchie, Kennedy, Lyndon Gooch and Michelle Vaughan for Everton obviously we don't have any transfer budget in the first transfer window as I wanted to keep it as close to real life as possible but possibly in January we could look to bring in one of those players in possibly Matt Ritchie and um, we do need a, a winger and he's he's pretty decent this is the happiness screen it's sorted into the hierarchy order um, obviously already said no unhappy players at the moment as it's they're still on holiday basically so I would judge their happiness as being whether they're enjoying their holidays. So Ross Barkley not really enjoying his holidays as much as perhaps Wayne Rooney who's delighted. Perhaps he went to the, the Bahamas and Ross just went to Butlins. I don't know. But does Barkley like Butlins? Perhaps. Now since we are playing with the transfer window, transfer budget disabled, as I've already said, the only transfers that we'll be making would be revolving staff. And this one is a bit of a needed one, really. We didn't have an assistant manager, as I believe he must have left when Kuhlman did. So we are looking to hire Terry Burton as assistant manager. 63-year-old who had some experience with Arsenal, and then Folkestone and Hayes. It's a very short career, I don't know why it's so short, but hopefully he can be a good second-hand man for me. Now, taking a look at the medical centre, which is, again, I think this is a new introduction into this year's game as well um, obviously this part looks quite interesting the risk assessment part so it says there's currently no players with above average risk of injury so I'm assuming that takes into account how many matches they've played and their training workload and all that jazz to show who's expected or who's likely to get an injury quite like that current injuries there you can see uh, a few main players actually out injured at the moment, Ross Barkley, Seamus Coleman and Yannick Balassi, probably the, the top three, Funus Murray as well, he's quite good, James McCarthy not really bothered about getting injured all the time, um, he's probably barely going to play for me to be honest, but there's, there's a few lengthy injuries as well. The longest one is Funus Murray who's got a damaged knee cartilage, obviously Seamus Coleman broke his leg but he's expected to be back in September. For that, then Yannick Balassi with damaged cruciate ligaments is expected to be out. Well, it'll probably be in January, it's end of December, but I'll probably be probably not playing until January. Um, he's really one of the reasons why we have a, a bit of a, a left midfield problem at the moment, but I'm sure we can get through it. So, finally, this is the fixture list for the season. You see, we start our Premier Division campaign at home to Chelsea. Um, not actually look through this fixture list. So bear with me. I don't know if there's any tough runs or anything. A little bit of a tough run there, Tottenham Liverpool back to back. But no, it looks like we've got off pretty well. There's gaps between playing all the big teams, so we don't play them all at once, apart from Liverpool and Tottenham. So I'm pretty pleased with that. We've got quite a few friendlies lined up all the way from home, um, apart from the, the final one against Sevilla. And we've, of course, got the Europa League qualifying, which starts on the 27th of July, the third qualifying round. We'll see if we get in that. Next episode, we will do both legs of that game. I'll play the Mansfield game offline in the middle. I come back. But 
that is it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please feel free to do this challenge yourself in game and comment below or tweet me or just let me know how you guys do. Um, I'd be very interested to see, especially compared to me because I'm not normally very good at the game. But <laughs> be sure to see. You'll never know. Maybe these tactics will come off for me. But let me know how you guys do. If you do try the challenge, let me know who you're choosing as your first save in Football Manager 2018. I do realise this is quite late considering the beta has been out for about two weeks at this point but just let me know um if you've got any ideas for signings i can make in january obviously that might come a bit later when we actually see this quad play and see who who's not performing and who is performing but if you've got any ideas please let me know if any tactics have specifically worked for you as everton manager in the game again let me know and i might look into them but that's it for this episode hit the like button if you enjoyed it please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.